opportunistic adaptation. Let's talk about what that means. It really is that we, we pursue small and uncertain. We don't require new technology. A lot of these are actually barely visible and a lot of it's unlikely to track investment, but once in motion, it'll discover a larger opportunity. It's incredible as to how many businesses they start out, they're doing this thing and two years later, the, the people think they may have gone belly up, but they changed your name and changed their focus or doing this and making lots of money. Sometimes when you start, you'll shift as you come through and see in greater depth the, the a market that opens up that you haven't seen before. There's other opportunities and otherwise you sat there and you didn't pay attention to it in the process. Okay, So sometimes it can occur early in the stages of an entrepreneur. There's an unexpected opportunity. You're doing this thing and all of a sudden this opens up and you're looking at it thinking, wow, how come nobody ever thought of that before? Maybe if I try it and you try it and all of a sudden, boom, now you have a super success far greater than what you started out initially. It can occur over a long period of time or just like that. It depends on your abilities as to how much you can see the opportunities. The other part too requires constant experimentation. Go out and try, try, try. Be persistent, be open-minded. Don't say, I can't do that. No, the answer is, let me check and see if I can do that. There's two different ways to approach it. Make certain you're agile in the process that you're looking. An idea is a good opportunity if it, it fills the customer's needs. You have the skills and resources to start a business. You can sell a product or service at a reasonable price and still profit. You can get your product or service to customers before the window of opportunity closes. You, you can keep the business going. I have a guy that I use to clean windows in my own business and at the home. We sat down and I talked to him and I just sat down and I took the opportunity canvas and I just sketched out something. I said, okay, you come by my house, you clean my windows. I did my gutters clean. And, and I, I said, if you do that, next time you come, you can clean my gutters and, and you're gonna get some extra money out of me in the process and I get a service they want. And by the way, it doesn't cost you any more money for, for, for gas. What about my solar panels? I have solar panels. You know what? They're up there for three years. I haven't ever cleaned them in those three years. Gee, if I had somebody with a power washer, oh wait, that could be you. You can sit down and clean my, my solar panels and charge me a fee for it. And I'm happy that I got it done and off my checklist. And you're happy because you get more money in the process and it's all at the same spot. What about the fact when you get up and clean the solar panels, you sit down and take pictures on the back, charge me 20 bucks more. And then if, I, if you see I have a brand new electric vehicle in the driveway, say, hey, Oh, I, I have a partner of mine. He sits there and he installs additional panels. You're going to need that with your new electric car. Okay, would you want me to line it up for you? And then you get a 15% commission off the electrician's thing and you make more money. All of a sudden now you stop at my house. You're Not only are you taking the money for the windows, you're taking money for this, money for this, money for this. And all of a sudden now your revenue starts piling up and you're going to average about 20 to 25% more than you're making now without increasing one additional stop. It's one stop, but also offering four services. Think about the opportunity that you have over there. Different viewpoints, product pushing, that's really hard when you're sitting down, push, 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 but demand pull fundamentally, listen to customers, what do they want? I told him about the gutter cleaning. He says, well, I did that. You never told me. I says, well, I didn't know you wanted that. Then ask me if I want it. He says, well, I can do this too. I said, you never told me that before. So it went through and we had this dialogue. When do you want it? Where do you want it? And how do you want it served to provide it? All of these are fundamentally, but if you're an entrepreneur, always remember to ask if you if they want your service or your product over there. Different viewpoints. Do I have it or can I get it? When they want it, where do they want it? And the way they want it. Here's Steve Jobs. Steve Jobs, by the way, he wasn't a techie guy. It was Steve Wozniak that was attacked. Jobs was one of the world's greatest entrepreneurs. So they, they created the Apple One in 1976. They improved the same product. Talk about adapting to opportunity. The, the first Apple did really well. The second one went much better. And then finally in 84, they came out with the Mac. And the Mac has been with us ever since. He started another one called Next after he was fired from his own firm that he started. And then he started Pixar. Gee, 26th Academy Awards, and he sold it for $7.6 billion. 
Not bad for a guy who lost his job just a couple of years before. He came out with the Cube, which is an odd, odd thing, an odd computer in 2000, but it had no cooling fan and made the Cube much thinner than previous computers. He came out with the iPod that totally devastated the record industry and made billions for Apple computers. The MacBook came out 2006, and then the iPhone changed the entire world that we lived in, also destroyed the entire camera industry in the process, got rid of the iPod industry because he changed his own product in the process and competed against it, and he finally came out with the iPad in 2010. Pretty opportunistic adaptation in the process. Not since Edison was an inventor has any one person influenced inventiveness and inventions in our society and Stephen Jobs. We really have iPhones, even if you don't have an Apple, even if you have an Android, I, I postulate that if Stephen Jobs hadn't pushed the iPhone, you wouldn't have either one of the systems out there because he really pushed the idea of having portability in the process. He wasn't a techie, just an entrepreneur looking for an opportunity and moved and then he improved on his improvements. Take care.